there are a ton of mistakes made in movies and television when it comes to SHTF or end of the world type programs. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the mistakes that I think are the most important because they are the types of mistakes that the average unprepared person would probably actually make that could harm or kill them in the real world. Even though on TV and in the movies, nothing bad happens most of the time. So let's go ahead and get started in no particular order. Number one, drinking any water from any source. And what I mean by that is that any water that has been scavenged should be assumed to be with some measure of contamination and should therefore be filtered and or purified. But not on TV or in the movies. Found a creek, found a puddle, help yourself. Apparently all water is safe all the time. Number two, eating anything and everything. And it goes without saying, or so I would hope, that anything that you scavenge should be examined to determine if it can or should be eaten or not. Have you ever heard of anyone on any of these shows using the universal edibility test? I sure haven't. Number three, worrying about food right away. Believe it or not, food is not necessarily your first priority. So when SHTF happens, if you don't have immediate access to food, you should be okay for a little while. Of all the things you might need, water, shelter, medical attention, etc., food is the one thing you can go without for a while and still manage. Number four, out of shape, out of luck, or so it would seem. On many of these shows, you see people who are not in good physical condition who seem to be fine with walking 12 hours a day without stopping. And the next day, back to it with no problems. The reality of it is that people who are not in good shape will burn out quickly, not get nearly as far as they would like to think, and be so burned with sore muscles the next day that they will hardly be able to move. Number five, no energy conservation. Tying in with number four, if you are not accustomed to constant walking or strenuous movement, then you're going to need to take breaks to conserve energy. Hell, even if you are in good shape, you may need to do this. But on TV, people wander around all day long hoping to stumble over a can of peas, and they feel fine. Number six, no volume control. And what I mean by that is how you often see people standing around having a loud argument out in the open. With no power and no vehicles on the road, there will be no ambient background noise, which means sound will carry. So if you're having a shouting match in the middle of nowhere, you could be heard for miles and likely draw unwanted attention, at least in real life. Number seven, no priorities in order. Either that or their priorities are overshadowed by personal issues. No one works on what needs to be done in order of necessity. Everything seems to be randomly organized or their priorities are based on emotional responses and personal wants. And somehow, everything still turns out all right. Number eight, no teamwork. In the average survival of post-apocalyptic show, you hardly ever see any real teamwork being played out. No one really cooperates. No one really sits down and evaluates priorities. No one really listens. They split up into factions and crisscross all over each other to pad out the plot. Number nine, almost no one is ever prepared. You rarely see in these shows someone who is actually prepared for anything, let alone the disaster being used in the plot. You would think there would be at least a couple of people who were somewhat ready, but you rarely do. All you see is unprepared people who somehow managed to muddle through and survive nearly impossible circumstances. And number 10, preppers are crazy. If there is a prepper in the movie or the show, they don't generally act like normal people. They're often depicted as wannabe warlords or gun fanatics or behave super paranoid or exhibit some other undesirable trait that makes the average person think that they should avoid them altogether. And you just knew I had one more for you, didn't you? Call it number 11 if you will. Prepared people die in movies and TV. If there is someone who is a prepper, they always seem to die, while the person who deserves to live the least is the last one standing. Number 10 Cloverfield Lane is a great example of this Hollywood approach to disaster story writing. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen Cloverfield Lane, 
This is the one where the person who causes everyone else to get killed and destroys the shelter and all the supplies on account of her resistance to the situation, even after realizing that the situation was real, is the only one to survive. This type of narrative is carried out in many similar plots. Of course, you have to keep in mind that television and movies are just for entertainment. But as previously stated, the average person will probably still behave exactly like what you see on film, the only difference being that it won't end well for them in real life. So if nothing else, these shows are great examples of what not to do in SHTF. Any thoughts or other points? Feel free to post them in the comments section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up, easiest way to show your appreciation. Share it if you can and subscribe if you are new. Check out some of the other videos for more interesting content. If you would like to help out the channel, there are links for that down below. Or you could simply let any ads that pop up run. Every little bit helps and I sure do appreciate it. That being said, as always, stay frosty folks and thanks for watching.